Hello and welcome to my Extinction Quest Guide, which is the final quest in the Elder God Wars series. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe if you like all kinds of RuneScape content. Moving on to the requirements. The requirements for this quest are on screen. These are the only quests, hard requirements, you need before you can start this quest. The other quests listed in Jagex's image they made are simply suggestions. There's one more requirement you need to bring only if you've completed the Fate of the Gods quest, and that's the, the measure item which you can easily reclaim. All you need to do is teleport to the Eagle's Peak Lodestone, go towards the World Gate, right-click the World Gate and select the Quick Dial, and then choose Frenenske. After that, enter the world gate and choose the Elder Halls option. Once inside, simply pick up the measure from the floor and you're ready to start the quest. Now this quest is a little bit combat heavy, so bring your best combat gear. I suggest bring either ranged or magic. Magic in specific with the anime dead spell and tank armor is going to be very useful here. Definitely bring along a shield and maybe even some power burst of vitality if possible because you're going to take some damage during this quest. Finally, the Archaeology Journal is going to be your best friend for this quest, as you're going to need it a few times. Teleport to the Archaeology Guild with your Archaeology Journal and move towards the entrance of the city of Sentiston. Talk to Moya and accept the quest. After finishing the conversation, go inside the city and a cutscene will play. After the cutscene, you're going to need to kill every single Tekhar minion you can see outside. After killing all of these, you want to head south and enter the cathedral. Once in the cathedral, talk to any of the gods. For options, I chose option 1, Moya is on her side. Then I went through all of the other chat options and chose continue. After going through all the options and talking to Saradomin, you have to go towards the Eastern Front, aka the front where Croesus is located. Once you get to Croesus, a cutscene will play. The point of this location is simply to kill off Croesus by farming all of the fungus, being the mining, fishing, hunter and woodcutting plots. While doing this, Croesus will throw a variety of attacks at you, simply avoid the smoke and be sure that your stats aren't drained too far. You can heal yourself up by using super restores to restore your stats. Again, just to be clear, all you need to do is clear all four plots located in each corner. After doing so, you'll get a chat option, and then all you need to do is return back to Saradomin. I suggest not using your Pontifex ring teleport like I did, as if you do that, you're going to need to use your archaeology journal, go back to the entrance, and walk all the way back to the cathedral, instead of walking back from this position you're at right now. Talk to Saradomin, and he will tell you to go south to the Galasor front. This time, you don't actually need to kill any of the minions, just walk all the way to the Arglaesaur and go past the barrier. In this part of the quest, what you're going to need to do is light these braziers in front of these icicles in a certain order. I will be referring to the most left one as number one, the middle one as number two, and the one furthest on the right as number three. While lighting these braziers, the Arglaesaur can use his attacks, including the beam attack, so watch out. Light the first pillar only, and then enter the portal as it turns purple. Kill the Glacier inside. After you've done the first puzzle, only light the second one, so be sure to extinguish the first brazier as well. Again, just light the second brazier, the other one should not be lit. Enter the portal again, kill the Glacier, and then go outside. For the third puzzle, simply light the third brazier, Extinguish the second one and go inside. Similarly, you just kill the Glacier, go back outside, and for the final puzzle, you need to light the second and third braziers only. So the first one must be extinguished if you for whatever reason turned it on. After killing the final Glacier, exit the portal, and that should be this section complete. I did hear about some bugs going around where you didn't get this chat option, but I'm not sure how to fix that. Go back to Saradomin and talk to him again. This time Saradomin will tell you to go to the west and help the node on front. Go towards the west, take control of the cannon, and basically what you have to do is spam click all of the other cannons or siege engines you can see in front of you. 
This will have to be done multiple times until you no longer control the cannon and have to finish off the last cannon manually. You'll know you're at this step because Karapak will come and talk to you. After Karabak has talked to you, all you need to do is manually, so with your own character, finish off the Dwarven Siege Engine. Or should I say Siege Engines, as there's two you need to finish off. This shouldn't be too much of a big deal for any kind of player. After that, a cutscene will play where you see Zuck coming out of his little hidey hole. Go back to Saradomin and talk to him. After finishing the conversation, he will tell you to go and talk to Moya, Adastri and the other ones outside of the City of Sintistan entrance. Go and talk to them and just choose the continue option. You're going to need to have one inventory space as after finishing the conversation, they will give you an item known as the communications device in your inventory. After doing this, you're going to need to find an NPC known as Vice. I'm just going to call him Vice because his name is really hard to pronounce. He's located near the Effigy Incubator D&D, which is at Anachronia. Teleport to the Lodestone and then follow the video as seen. Now this is the part where you're going to need the, the measure item if you've completed the Fate of the Gods quest. So if you don't already have that item because you skipped into this video and you have Fate of the Gods complete, go back to the timestamp in this video to see how to reobtain this item. After talking to Vice once, talk to him again to give him the measure. Then all you're going to need to do is talk to Hanamus, then back to Vice, and again and again, until they eventually tell you to use the communications device. Basically, it's a lot of conversation. After doing so, click on the communications device, go through the conversation, and eventually, you'll be done, and now you need to go towards the world gate. Teleport to the Eagle's Peak Lodestone and walk towards the World Gate. Once here, click on Vice. Once you're in the Quest instance, you'll want to click on Vice again and talk to him. This again will be a little bit of dialogue and you'll get a set of chat options of which you need to go for every single option. After going through all the options, simply click on the World Gate and go through. Once here, talk to the NPCs at the entrance until they disappear, and then look for three different crystals. Don't be confused with the regular crystals around the area like I was at the beginning, as these are not the ones you want. You want the ones where NPCs are located. For example, the one I just clicked on the video. That's one, that's two, and then the third one is pretty close over there. After doing that, go towards the fireplace and talk to the NPCs. After going through the entirety of the conversation, a cutscene with more dialogue will play. After this cutscene, you'll be outside the world gate again, talk to the NPCs and go through the entirety of the conversation. Then go through the world gate portal once more. Once inside, talk to the NPCs and then go around the area investigating and talking to any NPC you can find in this area. It's a pretty straightforward path, but I went ahead and talked to these NPCs here first. Then I investigated the large statue. Then I talked to Moya. After that, I investigated the smaller statue thing. I then talked to Vice and the other NPCs at the top of this area. And then I went back near the portal to talk to the NPCs once more. Again, this will be a bunch of dialogue, which you can read through if you're interested in the story. Then once outside, talk to the NPCs once more. When going through the conversation with Karapak, I'm not sure if this mattered, but I chose the second option every single time. So option two, option two, and option two. Once you've completed this part, you want to talk to the NPCs outside of the world gate again by clicking on Vice. Go inside the world gate. Talk to any NPC inside this area. When given the set of chat options, choose yes. After the conversation, click on the NPCs once more and then descend down the ledge. Obviously, choose option 1 for the extinction quest. Once down there, talk to Seren and go through the conversation. After you've completed the conversation, go back up and continue the extinction quest. Once up here, talk to any NPC, go through the conversation and eventually click on the purple portal. After having clicked on the portal, go back to the ledge, go down it, and talk to Seren once more. 
After finishing the conversation with Saren, you want to go back up the ledge and continue the extinction quest. You'll now see Karapak here, which you want to talk to. When talking to Karapak, go through every single option and then choose the continue option until a cutscene will play. After the cutscene has ended, you'll be able to enter the portal, which will require 6 free inventory slots. I suggest dropping your food here as you do not need any food for this section. The Dark Portal puzzle is by far the hardest or most complex part of this quest. I'm going to try and guide you through this puzzle as best I can step by step, but there are a couple things you need to know. First of all, there are different types of orbs, but you want to focus on mining the Anamica rocks and obtaining the orange orbs to progress. The Dark Anamica rocks will eventually allow you to progress and move faster inside this weird puzzly area. The blue and purple orbs have two different functions. The blue orbs allow you to move boulders which can give you access to different areas and are also used for the puzzle. The purple orbs allow you to open the unopened rifts to allow you to teleport through. Once the timer ends as you're fighting against the timer the rifts will close however the orange orbs and dark anamica rocks you collected will be saved so your progress is not lost. It's worth noting that you can abuse the free cam mechanic to pause your timer to fly around and see what your next step will be. You can do this by right clicking your world map icon and choosing free cam. This may be fixed in the future, but for now, this is a good way of exploring the area without losing your time. After failing 20 times, you also get extra time every time you attempt this, which is great as it makes it far easier. What you should be doing at the start is collecting all the orange orbs and dark anamica ore you can see around the area. Now, I didn't do this because at the time, I didn't know that dark anamica would increase my speed and progression. Start by collecting everything you can see in this area highlighted in red. Next up, which can be your next run, you can take all the time you need in the world, grab the boulder orb, move the boulder, and grab everything you can see in that location. The third step is to collect the boulder orb again, move the boulder, grab the rift orb, as that's the only thing that will respawn there, open the rift highlighted with number 4, and then collect everything at number 5. The next step in the puzzle, which you should absolutely do on a new attempt, is grab a boulder orb, move the boulder, grab the new rift orb, go into the rift with number 4, grab everything including a new boulder orb, a second one as you use the first one, go into the rift with number 5, and then see how far you can get by collecting everything you can see and moving the boulder which you'll find in your path. If right any of these steps you seem to have too little time to explore, after you've gathered the resources once, your second attempt at those steps should be much faster as you won't need to collect the resources and you can keep going as you can see in this video on screen. The next step in this puzzle is to actually purposely fail, but have a rift orb and boulder orb in your inventory for your next attempt. It will all become clear in just a second. So you move the boulder, you grab that rift orb, you don't use it, you go into the open rift and grab a boulder orb, and then you'll be left with both a boulder and rift orb in your inventory when starting the next run. Alright, now that you have both a boulder and rift orb in your inventory, what you're going to do in your next run is open the rift to your left immediately. Then go back in because you don't want to keep going through that rift. You're then going to move the boulder to get your second rift orb. After having done that, you're going to move back and actually grab the other bald orb you can see. You're then going to go through the rift you open at the start of this run and move the boulder as usual. At the end of the path, you're going to want to open the rift, go inside, grab the orange orb and any other resources you might see, and there's that. Now you've completed this part of the progress. To make it easy on yourself, go ahead and grab both a boulder and rift orb once more. Then just let the timer end as you're going to be using these for your next run. This one is slightly different, so I'm going to talk you through it without speeding up the video. Open the rift to your left as usual with the placeholder orb. Go back out. Move the boulder.
Grab the Rift Orb. Go inside this open rift. Grab the Bold Orb. Go back out. Go into the initial rift you opened. Move this boulder and place it right there onto one of those three points. Go back to the spawn, grab the other boulder orb, and move this second boulder to the same position as you can see on video. Go into the rift at the end of the path. Grab the other boulder orb. And drag the third boulder onto that spot right there and stand on this location. This will teleport you to another area in the quest. Now chances are at this point your time is running out so just try and gather whatever you can. And you'll have to redo this exact same run and continue from this point on with an item known as Relic of the Titans. The rift you needed to open should now be permanently open if you properly did that section. Which will allow you to just grab the first bold orb in that starting spawn area and then follow the video as seen. Go ahead and grab the rift orb that has appeared and then stand in the middle of the three boulders again. Collect any resources you might have missed earlier and then go over this ledge. Grab the orange orbs. Now you see me wasting time here, but you have to move the boulder and enter the rift. Collect everything. Cross the ledge. Collect everything, and if you have enough time, try and collect the spring as well. If you don't have enough time, you might want to redo this run, and because you've gathered the resources already, it should be a lot faster to get to the spring. But yeah, the goal here is to gather the divination spring and then do one final run. Alright, let's take you through the final run, grab the boulder orb, go into the rift that is permanently open now, and follow the video as seen. You're going to go ahead and grab this Rift Orb. Go inside the middle of the three boulders. Cross the ledge and then give memories to the Boiling Rift. After you've done that, enter the inactive Rift by activating it using that Rift Orb. And then activate the Idol of the Leviathan, and that will finish the puzzle. You will then continue with a bunch of dialogue and a cutscene. After the cutscene, the needle is broken, and you're going to need to pick up all five needle shards and then speak to Moya. After talking to Moya, you'll want to descend the ledge and talk to Saren. I'm not sure if it matters what chat options you pick here, but I chose option one, and with the second set of options, I chose option three. After completing the dialogue, Saren will disappear and open a portal, or rift. Go inside this big portal, and then talk to Saren again. This will be a bunch of conversation, and after you've completed the conversation, they will move locations, and you'll want to go ahead and talk to the Elder Chahawa. After going through the conversation with the Elder, you're going to need to help four local people escape, or at least talk to them and help them. The Passkeeper just requires a conversation, so once it's finished, you're done here. You're then going to move on to the Craftmaster, which will have you pick up three different items and then talk to him again. The Pondkeeper wants you to fish some fish from the nearby fishing spot and then talk to him again. Finally, for the Plant Keeper, all you're going to need to do is find four different seeds from four different locations, as seen on the video, which should be the same for every single player.
Now this is the part where we're getting close to actually fighting the final boss. So in case you need some food, I suggest you go ahead and get it now and get geared up if you aren't already. I assume the way to get back is simply by going back down into the world gate and going through the same rift you came here from. Since you've helped all four locals, you will now have to go ahead and talk to Moya. After having talked to Moya, talk to Saren. Go back and talk to Moya and the other NPCs once more. After the conversation, you'll notice these spots on the floor. You're going to need to place the needle parts you've collected earlier on these spots. This will annoy the heck out of Saren, and that's exactly what's supposed to happen. After placing down two, the boss fight will commence. The first part of the fight is fairly straightforward. Stay alive, kill the shadows, and try and deal as much damage to the light and dark lords as possible. I'm not entirely sure how the immunity works, and you've got to understand this is my only attempt at the quest and a day of release guide. Once you've killed one of the lords, you'll get this unstable energy, which you have to direct at the other lord by clicking on it once, and then clicking on wherever that lord is located. This is similar to the baller mechanics from the puzzle we did earlier. After killing the other lords, you can place another marker and the second phase of the boss fight will start. This part of the fight is a little bit more tricky than the previous one, but just avoid the mechanics, you know, the lightning, the fire, and kill the Muspa until you're able to attack the Ma Wisp. This Ma Wisp becomes vulnerable every time you've killed the Muspa for a certain period of time. You want to continue doing this until the Ma Wisp is dead, and once it is dead, you'll be able to place down another marker. Now, I'm not sure if you'll experience this, but I had a bugged phase. So as you can see, the boss fight didn't start and it didn't start after five minutes. If this happens, relog and you'll be able to start from this phase just fine. To get back to the boss fight, you'll have to enter the world gate twice and then you'll be able to start from that phase. Now, this boss fight, uh, pray magic, avoid every mechanic if possible. Really, most players should be able to do this with enough food, just improvise and try as best you can to avoid the flames, which are similar to Vindictus Fire. At a certain point, the god eggs will start floating around and basically they're bombs, they deal damage as well. Avoid them, keep running around, and at a certain point you'll also get attacked by like Seren clones. So the damage definitely adds up, and uh, this is the toughest part of the entire boss fight, and there's a good chance you'll die. If you use Barricade at the final part of the fight, it's going to be significantly easier as you take zero damage for a certain period of time. After the fight, you'll have some dialogue, and you'll be told to run away and go to the world gate, but you won't be able to escape, and eventually you'll come into this area with Saren. You want to talk to Saren, and I chose the first option, which is Spare the Universe, I'm not sure if it matters. But yeah, I picked that option and then you'll have tons of dialogue with Saren and the NPCs. But it's basically near the end of the quest. All you need to do is use your archaeology journal, teleport to the Sentiston area, go into the city of Sentiston, talk to Sarah Doman. At a certain point, he will actually teleport away and you'll want to talk to Asnandra who will tell you to go outside. So you'll use your archaeology journal, teleport again and go towards the entrance. Don't go inside the city system. Talk to Asnandra. Be sure to have enough inventory slots open. Go through all the options and choose continue and that will be the end of the quest. Now before you click off this video, you're going to need to do one more thing to unlock the new skilling area. Go to the effigy incubator area, then talk to Vice and then to Hannibus. Go through all the dialogue, you can skip the options by choosing continue. And after going through all of that dialogue, you'll be able to enter to the new skilling area through the hibernation pod. In this area, you can build AFK skilling stations using your Anachronia base camp resources, although it's pretty expensive as it requires 50,000 of every single type. This is something I'll cover in a future video. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.